let's start with some of the basics we learned in networking concepts. We know that a packet has two main parts, TCP IP header and the payload. Firewall helps in stopping unnecessary traffic by scanning the TCP IP header. Now consider this scenario. We have a web server hosting our e-commerce website. Obviously, everyone in the internet should be able to visit our website. So, we will write the rule on the firewall like source IP address equals to any, source port equals to any, destination IP address is equal to 50.60.70.80 which is the public IP address of our web server and destination port is equal to 443 which is HTTPS and the firewall should allow this traffic. Because anyone can connect to our website on port number 443, what if a user in the internet connects to our web server on the allowed port but sends some malicious content in the payload? Because traditional firewalls are only concerned about TCP IP header, any malicious content in the payload won't be detected by firewalls. Let me highlight this with another example. Consider a college campus security guard standing at the entrance of the gate. He will allow or disallow anyone from entering the campus based on the ID card student shows. That is, a student has an ID card, he or she will be allowed into the campus. But what about the things that they are carrying in the bag? They might be carrying drugs or guns, which are obviously bad for the college campus. But the security guard does not bother about the contents of the bag. He will take the action purely based on the ID card. Similarly, a traditional firewall only scans TCP IP header and does not bother about the payload. That's why we needed another solution that would scan the contents of the packet. That's where IPS fits in. IPS stands for Intrusion Prevention System. It is a security solution that does deep packet inspection and detect any malicious network patterns. Deep packet inspection means looking at the payload of the packet. It is typically placed after the firewall in the network. The given logical diagram can be shown in physical connections like this. So how does IPS work? In order to detect something is bad in the payload, IPS should know what a bad traffic looks like. That's why IPS is supplied with a database of known bad traffic patterns. These patterns are called as signatures. Each passing packet will be picked up by IPS and the payload is scanned against the database of signature. If there is a match, an alert is triggered. Note that signatures are updated on a regular basis, approximately once in 15 days. Once the IPS scans the traffic, it can take three actions. It can pass the traffic if no signature is matched. It can alert if the administrator has set the signature to alert only. Then an alert will be thrown in the UI and sent to the admin via email. This is when the system is called IDS, Intrusion Detection System, because it detects and just alerts the administrator. The third action that an IPS could take is block. Here, the system is configured to block the traffic. This makes the system an IPS, Intrusion Prevention System. As discussed earlier, IPS is usually placed after the firewall for the following reason. IPS does deep packet inspection and hence requires more processing power than the firewall. If the IPS is placed before the firewall, it will unnecessarily do deep packet inspection of all the traffic while a good amount of traffic could have been blocked just by inspecting the TCP IP header with a packet filtering device like firewall. Please note, this way of placing the IPS through which every packet passes through is called inline placement. IPS can also be placed in span mode or tap mode. In this mode, 
IPS gets the copy of all the packets passing through the switch. Remember, only a copy is sent. The actual packet passes through and will reach the intended destination. Because of this, it cannot block the traffic. In this mode, the system can only alert. That's why this mode will yield an IDS system. Note that span or tap here refers to the configuration of a port on the switch. Once a port on the switch is configured as span, it collects copies of all the packets passing through the switch through all the ports. It's like configuring one port to listen on every other port. Now let's learn a bit more about IPS signatures. An IPS signature looks something like this. It is also called as SNORT format. SNORT is an open source IDS. The rule consists of two main parts, rule header and the rule options. The rule header tells when the rule should be applied and the rule option tells what to match in the payload. The main parts of the rules include rule action, protocol, source IP address and port number, direction of the traffic, destination IP address and port numbers. In the rule options, we have alert name, signature ID, revision number, classification and contents to match. HomeNet here refers to the internal network which can be configured in the SNORT configuration file. The overall rule says, when the packet has a protocol of ICMP and is coming from any source IP with any source port towards an IP address in the home net on any destination port and if the payload contains the word ICMP, consider it to be an alert of ICMP test with the signature ID of 1000001 and classify it as ICMP event. The triggered alerts look like this. This is a screenshot of McAfee IPS. We have the date and time of occurrence of the event, severity of the alert, name of the alert, the result that is the action taken by the IPS, source IP address, destination port and destination IP addresses, etc. This concludes our discussion on IPS.